today I'm back with my breast augmentation story. Now, last week I told you that I was going to post a Q&A about my augmentation, any questions you guys had. What I ended up doing was splitting the videos into two different videos. So this one is strictly my story, what I went through, and other things that weren't covered in the questions that were asked. If I bundled the whole thing together, honestly, the videos would probably be about 40 to 30 minutes long and I didn't want to create such a long video. So if you're interested in the story, stay here, keep watching, and if you just want to wait for the questions, the questions will be out either tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. So I'm going to get started with how I came about finding my doctor, who my doctor is, and stuff like that. I ended up going to Dr. Aiello, and he is from Ocean Plastic Surgery. He has offices in Newport Beach and an office in Los Alamitos. The Los Alamitos office is where the surgeries are done. Um, I went to his Newport office for the consultation. Well, how did I find him? I found him through my cousin. My cousin had actually gotten her breast done with him she loved her results her results looked great so then my aunt ended up going to him as well and hers looked amazing I went to him first and he just made me feel so comfortable he gave me so much information I just loved how comfortable he made me feel and it, it it just felt right to go to him I didn't have any doubts about whether I was going to the right surgeon and I honestly didn't even want to have a consultation with the other surgeons because I did call to try to schedule appointments with other ones and when they called me back I was just like oh you know never mind I found my surgeon I didn't want to go through with all the other ones because I knew that he was the right one for me and I had already seen his work in person not just in photos but you know my cousin and my aunt I went to him and I actually got my surgery done um, February of 2008. Now when I went to my consultation, I was so excited about it that I actually booked it a week and a half later. And he gave me different options. So there's a moderate profile. I actually have moderate profile. Moderate pro profile is a much more natural looking implant. I totally think my implants look fake but only because I know how my boobs look before and I know it, that I didn't have boobs and they're huge. I think they're big. A lot of people, especially on YouTube when I mention that I have breast implants, they're shocked. They think that they look really natural or they make comments that my boobs look natural and I get a lot of questions as to how I keep, how my boobs stay up and perky and then I tell people, oh well they're just, it's because they're implants and they're shocked to find out they're implants. And part of the reason being is because I have moderate profiles. And what moderate profiles are, they're wider, so they give you the side boob, which I love. I love side boob. So they're the wider of the implants, but they have less projection. And the less projection makes them look a lot more natural. Then there's moderate plus. Moderate plus is in between the moderate and the high profile implant. Moderate plus is... Um, not as wide so the diameter is smaller than the moderates but it has a, a little bit more projection than uh, the, the moderate profiles now there's high profile high profile or the more fake looking implants um, I think there are some that still look natural but they give you more of the fake rounded kind of look so you have much more projection but they're a lot thinner so if you have a wide a uh, rib cage it would definitely be smarter to get like a moderate profile unless you're going to get a really large implant and, and big boobs but that's for the surgeon to tell you it really depends what kind of look you're going for so i went with the moderates because at the time i wanted the very natural look and that's exactly what he gave me i think for them being as big as they are they do look natural and for everyone always confusing them for natural boobs I, I'm, I think it's pretty safe to say that they look more on the natural side when I was trying to find out about what size I wanted I went on to a few websites the main 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 websites I went on were um, I can't remember the exact name but then there's also real self real self um, is the one I used the most and that one just has the people who have gone through surgery or are going through surgeries and they have pictures like pre-op and post-op 
you can find anything. You can find um, breast implants, nose jobs, Brazilian butt lifts, um, Botox, like uh, uh, chemical peels. You can find everything on that website. That was my go-to website for like reading all the experiences that the women went through. You know, how they recovered, how the pain level was. I, so I kind of, I got most of my information from there. On there, I would look at the photos and I would see how many CCs they have. You kind of want to look for someone who is the same build as you, who has like the same chest size, even height, even weight. All of that affects how the implants are going to look on you because 600 CCs can look ginormous on another person and then they can look a lot smaller than what they look on me. I had originally wanted to go, I told myself, oh, I want to look super natural. I want a B cup. And... My mom knew, like, no, you're getting the surgery done. You're going to regret if you get a B cup. If you're going to get it done, you might as well make it worth it. And she knew what she was talking about because she has hers done too. So thank God I listened to my mama because then I ended up, uh, when I found the picture that I liked and I showed him, he said that I was going to end up being more of a D cup. And I was like, oh, well, there we go. Okay, she's right. I don't want to be a B cup. Um, the kind of implant I got, I got saline. And the reason I got saline is because in California, you have to be uh, 22 years old in order to get silicone. I did not want to wait another year to get my boobs done, so I got them done. Regardless, I got saline. Uh, I was perfectly fine with it. It wasn't going to be like a deal breaker or anything. So the day of the surgery, uh, I couldn't eat. I couldn't have anything after 9 o'clock the night before. So I didn't have anything and in the morning, I was super pumped, super excited. My cousin and my aunt went with me. I told my surgeon I was like you know what just fit what you can fit in me you know you can have a set cc that you want or a set size but my doctor said that you never really know if you're going to be able to like fit the implant because it also depends on the elasticity of your skin so I told him you know what just fit whatever you can fit in there like just fit whatever puppies you can get in there <laughs> so I went in that surgery room not knowing what I was going to come out with which I know a lot of people say a lot of people told me that I was crazy but I thought I wasn't going to be able to get much because I was barely a 32A I wasn't even like a complete A you know what I would do I would wear two push-up bras at a time so I put one push-up bra and then wear another push-up bra just to kind of give me a little bit of cleavage that's how flat I was I would double bra it and they were push-up bras after the surgery, they let me sleep for two hours. When I woke up, I just saw the nurse. She was like waking me up and you just feel like an elephant is sitting on top of you and you can't take very deep breaths. So you're kind of breathing fast but taking short breaths because if you take too deep of a breath, it hurts. I couldn't feel anything at first because you're numb you can just feel all the pressure and when I look down they have like that granny bra on you and you look flat flat and I'm looking at myself and I'm like I just did this and I look flat so I thought that like it didn't even make a difference but that's because um the boobs are still underneath the skin they're being pushed flat by your skin your skin has to loosen up and the implant has to adjust with your body so when i woke up the nurse was right to the right of me and she asked me do you know what your little itty bitty body got and i'm like no and she says 600 cc's and my eyes are like what i was like what the hell I could not believe it like what how did they even fit that in there but then I was so confused because I'm looking down and I'm like I look like I don't have boobs like what the hell is going on why do they look so flat I thought for some reason I thought that they were just gonna look big right away <laughs> but they don't and I did forget to mention that I got them under the muscle under the muscle squishes the implant down more so let's say my 600 cc's actually look like 500 cc's compared to someone who gets them over the muscle and under the muscle is in my opinion better because if you plan on having kids you can still breastfeed now if you put them over the muscle that can damage the tissue of 
the muscle and you won't be able to breastfeed. And under the muscle makes them look more natural than over. Over the muscle tends to make a lot of them look more solid or a lot more firm. And that's not what I wanted. I wanted the more natural look. I was 600 cc. <laughs> I really want to explain what happened to me that day because there were some complications that happened. My cousin and my aunt picked me up and we stopped at Jamba Juice so I can get a little bit of something in my stomach. Well, they gave me Vicodin for painkillers. At first, I didn't need the pain medication. Like, I felt fine. I didn't really feel anything. Just a lot of pressure on me. And once the pain started kicking in, which was a couple of hours after, I popped one Vicodin. And I then called my cousin and said, you know, I need to use the restroom. So she helped me to the restroom and she waited there as I went and pee or whatever. And I got up and as I was walking, you know, she helped me like walk towards the sink so I could wash my hands. And all I remember is looking at her and saying, I feel really dizzy. And that's all I remember. And next thing you know, I'm thinking to myself, I'm asleep. Why am I asleep? I shouldn't be asleep. I was just standing up. So when I told myself that, I woke up and my aunt was over me and she was like crying. She was like tapping my face, trying to like wake me up. And my cousin's on the phone. I guess she's on the phone with 911. I had passed out and that was my fault because I'm dumb and I took Vicodin on half a cup of Jamba Juice. I didn't eat anything and you always have especially after anesthesia you need to have a little bit of something in your stomach and especially before you take pain medication well my stomach was still on pretty much empty from the night before so I passed out and as much as I wanted to get up I couldn't like my body was so heavy and I could see my aunt and it just I, I felt numb my face was just tingling I couldn't say anything it was hard for me to breathe and Next thing you know, there's um, the EMTs, they come in, the paramedics come in, they like try to ask me questions and I can't answer them. I'm just so out of it and I'm just staring and I'm numb, I can't lift my arms, my whole body is cold. Ice cold, my aunt and my cousin are crying and I'm just like, I, you know, I can't do anything. So they put me in the stretcher and they wheel me out into the ambulance and finally they I was having a, a, a little bit of a hard time breathing especially since I had just got my boobs done so it was fucking embarrassing because they had they connected some stuff on me I don't know they connected some stuff on me and they had to take my sweater off and I had like all the bandages and like the granny bra that they put on after you have your surgery and I'm just like Oh, this is, I'm thinking to myself like, shit, like I, I just passed out and then I'm going through this, this is so embarrassing. I went to the hospital, they laid me on a bed, my body was still freezing, like I was cold, I could not get like the heat back into my body. So they brought some like super warm blankets, they ran a couple tests, I was perfectly fine, I, I knew I was fine, I was just on an empty stomach. And they kept me there for a couple of hours and after a while like my body started warming up and I started feeling better. And after that, I was okay. And that left me with a $2,000 bill. <laughs> so, lesson, do not take pain medication on an empty stomach. You gotta make sure to eat something even if, even if you don't feel hungry because I didn't feel hungry after surgery. I did not feel hungry after surgery so I, I couldn't, I could only drink half of that Jamba Juice cup. So moral of the story, make sure to eat even if you're not hungry at all. You've got to, got to put something in your stomach because then you're gonna end up with a $2,000 hospital bill. Well, then I went back to my mom's. So the, the most annoying thing that happens, no, Actually, this isn't the most annoying thing. This was the second most annoying thing. There's this thing called morning boot. Now, you cannot lay down when you get your breasts done. You need to be sitting more in an upright position. You can slant a little bit, but they don't recommend it. After I was able to lay down a little bit more, there's this thing called morning boot. 
and what it is is the first thing in the morning when you sit up you just feel like all this weight and pressure and pain drop and you feel so sore and your boobs hurt like it's it's bearable but and it's just for a few seconds so it's not like last it lasts the day it's just for the the in the the time that you're getting up and your boobs are dropping back down oh, they feel so sore I would hate it in the morning oh my gosh that was so annoying that and you can't lift your hands up so you're gonna have to have someone help you another thing I want to touch on is massaging I started massaging after a week. Now, if you have a strap, you won't have to massage. There are some doctors that put a strap over that keeps the implants pushed down. And the strap and massaging is important just so your breasts drop. You need them to drop. If not, you're gonna have high boobs and your nipples are gonna be all the way down here, like below. They're not gonna look like normal boobs. And this one is the most annoying and honestly the most painful. Now, they call these zingers. I don't know how accurate that is. I just saw people online saying that that's what it was called. But it's when your nerves are regrouping around your breasts. They are extremely sensitive. And when I was at work, I would wear loose clothing. But even then, anything that would touch my boobs, it would feel like they were on fire. It would set the nerves off when they were regrouping and they, it just felt like electricity in your boobs and it hurt so much. And that is the part that I will say was painful. That was the most painful for me were those zingers. But yeah, they just feel very sensitive and that happened for um, a couple of weeks, I would say. Now, I would say the whole recovery for me until I actually really started feeling good and I could raise my arms and things like that was about a month. Like after that month, you know, I was able to wear bras. Um, I didn't wear underwire. You do not want to wear underwire for a while. I actually wore that granny bra for like ever. I think, I think I wore it for maybe like even four years after that it just felt so comfortable and I know my cousin was the same way she would not get rid of it it just feels comfortable and it was great to sleep with at night but overall my experience was amazing I love my doctor I plan to use him again I don't want to go to anyone else and yeah so that's just pretty much it I just wanted to get that whole story and the background of what happened um, like I said, uh, in the next day or two, I will have the Q&A. The Q&A is going to be a pretty long one because I did have a lot of questions, which, again, is why I split this video up. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you all for watching. Sorry it took so long to get this breast implant video up, but I hope I answered some good questions. And like I said, I have more coming out in the next couple of days, so make sure to look for that notification. Thank you, loves. I'll see you soon. Bye.